health psychology involves health psychologists researching ways to improve our lives, like stress relief techniques, healthy living, ways to combat illnesses. Stressors are events that we perceive as stressful, threatening or challenging. For example, traffic or exams might be stressors in your life. Stress is the physical response to our body's experience of a stressor, like increase in blood pressure, adrenaline, increase in breathing. So a stressor is an, an event that we find threatening or challenging. Stress is the body's response to that stressor. What stresses people out will vary from person to person. If I ask you what stresses you out, many of you might say exams, parents, teachers, my roommate. What stresses us out will be different. I stress over my family leaving dirty dishes in the sink. That probably doesn't bother you. But they all have one thing in common. What stresses everyone out is the fact that we don't have control. You don't have control over your roommate, your parents, traffic, exams, professors, and, and that is the underlying cause. So stressors are different for all of us, but they all have that one thing in common. They are things that we cannot control. As you can see from the chart, young adults tend to have the highest levels of stress, and then it tends to decline as you get older. One reason would be you don't have total control in your early adulthood years. You haven't become financially stable. There's a lot of uncertainty wondering what college am I going to go to? What career path am I going to take? You know, who am I going to find to spend the rest of my life with? Do I want children and things like that? Once you get older and your life becomes more stable, then the stress level will start to decline. There are three different categories of stressors. Uh, the first one is a catastrophic event, like an earthquake, a war, a flood, your house uh, catches on fire, something devastating. This is short term. People will have stress when they're experiencing this event, but then once you're removed from that event, you rebuild, the war ends, etc., then the stress goes away. So this is a short-term stress. Same as the life change. You know, that would be any type of life change. You have a child, you get divorced, you get married, a death in the family, you lose your job. Okay, any life-changing experience is going to cause stress. Think about getting a new job. You're under stress trying to figure out what am I supposed to do and I want to do a good job. And once you get used to it, and it becomes habit, then the stress will go away. So once you adjust to that life change, the stress will decline. So that is short term as well. The dangerous category of stress is the daily hassles. And this is stress every day, day after day after day, which we'll look at in a moment, can take a horrible toll on our bodies. And this could be people who have to sit and rush our traffic every day, wait in long lines, uh, have job stress. You know, think of like a stockbroker. Uh, they have a lot of stress. And in, in fact, uh, autopsies have shown uh, stockbrokers' hearts are roughly uh, several times larger than the average heart. You know, the heart's a muscle. And when you're under stress and it and the blood is pumping and the heart is working faster and harder, the muscle will grow. Uh, this can cause burnout. You know, stress is very harmful to the body, and this is a long-term stress. So that's why I said this is the most dangerous. The other two are just short-term. Two researchers, Friedman and Rosenman, uh, believe that we're just born to either experience a lot of stress or be more relaxed. So this is type A, type B personality. You may have heard of this before. So a type A personality is very competitive, hard driving, they're impatient. They can become verbally aggressive and anger prone. They cannot delegate, they cannot delegate. They are very, very motivated individuals, always on the go. 
and obviously they are more at risk for heart disease and, and other things that uh, harmful things that stress does to the body. Whereas a type B person, they're just more relaxed. Uh, they don't get upset. They're more easygoing. They're not very competitive. And obviously a type B person would be less susceptible to the harmful effects of stress. This cartoon sums up type A, type B personality pretty well. A type A person is going to climb that mountain because it's there. But a type B person, they're just going to chill beside it because they prefer to just relax. So as I previously stated, stress has many damaging effects on the body. Whenever someone is exposed to daily stressors, day after day after day, which you see here as persistent stressors, there are certain hormones released during that stress response. Epinephrine, adrenaline, norepinephrine, but also cortisol. Cortisol is extremely damaging to our bodies. Cortisol will accumulate and build up on the inside of the arteries, like a plaque's buildup. And it can keep building and building, narrowing uh, the, the artery. And that can lead to, you see up at the top, some type of heart disease, normally like coronary artery disease, due to that plaque's buildup. Um, also, when stress, when you're under stress, your lymphocytes are suppressed. Okay, so that will decrease your immune system. Lymphocytes, are like white blood cells, they fight off infection. So if you're under stress and they're not being released and you come in contact with some bacteria or virus, then you're more prone to get sick. Now, there are two types of lymphocytes. Uh, first of all, B. B lymphocytes will attack bacteria and they are produced in the bone marrow. T lymphocytes will fight off viruses and carcinogens and they are produced in the thymus. There's also autonomic nervous system effects. So since you have blood flowing to your muscles, basically when you are under a lot of stress, other organs in the body are deprived. So that can lead to hypertension, high blood pressure. It can lead to headaches or migraines, uh, and also ulcers would fall into that category. Han Sele uh, believed that we go through three stages when we're experiencing stressors. And he called this the general adaptation syndrome. So the first stage is the alarm stage. This is when you're first exposed to some stressor. So let's say your stressor, you lost your job. Okay, now you're under stress. That's the alarm phase. This is the occurrence. So the second stage is resistance, and this is your body trying to adapt to this stressor day after day after day. So after you lose your job, you're going to be worried, you know, how am I going to pay my bills, feed my family? I need to find a new job. So every day you're under that stress day after day after day, and your body's trying to resist, okay? and the stress response is being released. So your blood pressure is up, you have those damaging hormones being released, heart rates increase day after day after day. And what typically happens is your body cannot keep up. It's trying to resist, but it can't. And you go into exhaustion. And here, this is when people usually get sick. You know, your lymphocytes aren't being released and you're vulnerable and your body just can't take it anymore and you just collapse and go into that exhaustion phase. Health psychologists believe that there are some ways, if, especially if you have those daily stressors, that you should be able to reduce stress or even if it's short term. Take a break, walk away. If it's something that you're doing and it's making you very stressed, take a break and then come back to it. Positive attitude is very important. Uh, people who are pessimistic tend to have lower levels of stress compared to, um, or have higher levels of stress compared to those who are optimistic. So be positive. Having a support group or friends that you can talk to, um, or whether it's uh, an activity or social group that you belong to, maybe church. Um, or some social club, it's good to have people to discuss your stress too. Adequate sleep is very important. Um, 
when we don't get enough sleep, okay, that's also very harmful to the body. So it's like a double whammy. But the ideal way to reduce stress they found is some type of exercise, yoga, or meditation. That seems to be the most beneficial. Two eating disorders that can affect our health. Um, these are classified as a mental illness. First of all, anorexia nervosa. People with anorexia can be any age or gender, but it's more common among girls and typically begins in your adolescent years. People with anorexia drop at least 15% or more below their ideal BMI or recommended weight for their height proportion. Although they are very, very thin, they still feel fat. They often wear baggy clothes to hide their bodies. Anorexics will starve themselves and, and feel very uncomfortable and ashamed if they eat. Uh, because they don't eat, they tend to be preoccupied with food. They often look at cookbooks and in many cases will cook for others, but deprive themselves of that food. It is the highest mortality rate of any Ill mental illness. Roughly one in five or 20% die from anorexia nervosa. When they don't eat, they're depriving their body of nutrients uh, to their muscles and organs, and they start to deteriorate. And many of them end up having to get a pacemaker because they have some type of heart arrhythmia. Uh, the electrolytes will, will be off. Um, it is very painful for the family to have to watch their loved ones go through this. Uh, it's, they're basically watching them slowly die, and the family just feels absolutely helpless. But in order to recover, the anorexic patient has to want treatment themselves. Uh, the family can't force it upon them. Uh, bulimia is very closely related. Um, someone with bulimia will usually eat a lot of high calorie foods, like ton of it, real fast. And then they'll, they'll get through periods of starvation. And then they'll go into this binge where they just eat a bunch of food at one time. And then they vomit or sometimes use laxatives. Somehow they have to get rid of all of the food. This is a binge and purge cycle. Most um, will put their finger down their throat to vomit, uh, but over time, it just becomes automatic. So someone with bulimia will have to be near a bathroom um, after they've finished uh, their binging cycle. Uh, many drink a, a lot of carbonated drinks at first to try and help the food come up better. Uh, bulimics suffer the, the same effects, uh, physical effects, health effects um, as anorexics. And finally, I mentioned the uh, BMI, Body Max Index. And here you can see this is um, an equation to figure out your BMI to see where you fall. You can do that on your own. Just keep in mind, if you're somebody who lifts weights and has a lot of muscle, uh, your BMI might throw you into a higher category. This is just for the average person. And as you know, uh, muscle weighs more than fat.